is breaking news from KSL. Heartbreak, shock, and tragedy in the small Utah County to town of Santa Quinn. An officer hit and killed by a semi-truck. Police say it was intentional. The driver then flees from police and later is captured in Vernal. We have team coverage tonight. Emma Benson is live from where it all happened. Shelby Lofton is live along where the procession took place. But first, let's go to news specialist Andrew Adams, who spoke to investigators and takes us to exactly what happened on I-15 this morning. Andrew. Well, Dan, really a wild, sad, and tragic chain of events that unfolded and has turned into this currently, which is a memorial that seems to be growing by the moment. People bringing by flowers, people from the community just dropping them off and, and leaving them there. Uh, it, it started this morning in central Utah with a call to 911 and dispatch. The report was that someone was standing on the back of a semi-trailer that was headed north on I-15. They're told the Santa Quinn officer was assisting with that call. Of course, this was the scene afterwards on I-15, a scene that left the freeway shut down in both directions for hours. Investigators say officers spotted the semi before 6.30, and they simply initiated a stop, but it was during that stop that the situation went south. The driver of the semi fled and drove northbound a short distance before turning around and driving the wrong way <clears throat> back towards the Santa Quinn officer as well as the UHP uh, trooper. As police are describing it, the semi hit the Santa Quinn officer, also his car, as well as a UHP trooper's cruiser. We're told the officer was killed during the collision. Police say the suspect ran from the scene and then is believed to have stolen multiple cars, including a white Ford F-150. They put out that description along with the driver's license photo of 42-year-old Michael Aaron Jane, who they identified as the suspect. Finally, just before 11.45, we learned Jane had been apprehended. Investigators say he was taken into custody near Vernal in a short pursuit where he wrecked. Police have not yet identified the officer who was killed. Unclear exactly when that will happen and still a lot for investigators to look into in this case, including just how exactly this all started early this morning. Now back to the studio. Yeah, what a brazen act today. Andrew, thanks for that report. Well, we can only imagine the heartbreak and loss the family of this officer is going through. No one knows that better than Shantae Johnson. Her husband, Officer Derek Johnson, was shot and killed during a traffic stop 10 and a half years ago. Shantae is now the family liaison with the Fraternal right. Order of Police. She met with the family of the fallen officer in Santa Quinn just this morning. They're in shock. They're devastated. Um, they're just feeling the ultimate loss. And they just don't know what to do. And they're searching for any answers that they can get. Um, and just they just want to wake up from this nightmare. Shante says the love and support from the community and the women and men in blue is a huge help for the family as they try to move forward. She says she was comforted to see an outpouring of love and support for that family at their house today. Well, a tribute to the fallen officer, dozens of police cars and emergency vehicles lined up to escort the body to the state medical examiner's office. Utahns also lined overpasses to honor him. We have team coverage on the procession, and we start with Emma Benson, live near the scene where this all started at around 6 this morning. Emma? Yeah, Debbie, truly uh, just a devastating turn of it turn of events here in Utah County today. We are here at the scene of the crash. Take a look. We are at a miles post 244 in Santa Quinn and northbound I-15 where that police officer was hit and killed early this morning and earlier this afternoon. As was mentioned, there was a procession for the fallen officer to transport him from this location to Taylorsville where the medical examiner's office is located. A long line of police vehicles followed that ambulance with people standing out in the rain to pay their respects again like Andrew mentioned we don't know the identity of the officer or how long exactly he had been on the force but it's clear that his death leaves a big hole in the police department and in his family as evidenced by Santa Quinn Police Sergeant Mike Wall we have family members who will miss their father at their nearing wedding but I can assure you we as a police department will stand up and we will be there and we are a one family. 
Yeah, he thanked the other agencies in Utah as well as the community for all of their support, asking that we all stand up as one during this difficult time. And Santa Quinn Mayor Dan Olson also spoke today saying that this really is a difficult loss. He said that we, quote, will do our best supporting each other, loving each other, and loving those men and women in blue that serve us every day. Truly a heartbreaking day for this community. Reporting live in Santa Quinn, Emma Benson, KSL 5 News. Back to you. Yeah, it's very heartbreaking indeed. Thanks a lot, Emma. We continue our team coverage now with Shelby Lofton, who spoke to people that line of, in that line of procession and route on those overpasses on the freeway. Shelby, a real show of support out there. Dan, it was amazing to see. We're here in Draper, just a little bit north of Point of the Mountain, and there were dozens of first responders wearing uniforms from across Salt Lake and Utah counties, but also members of the community, people who heard about this on their phones, who were watching the news and saw what had happened. They pulled over and stopped to pay their respects today. People lined up for miles up and down I-15. I spoke to one woman clear down in Springville who watched this, and she said it was an incredibly moving experience for her and her husband. No matter the weather today, the chance to pay respects to a fallen officer brought people from all walks of life to the procession route. We saw first responders from several departments park their vehicles with their lights flashing. Draper City firefighters draped the American flag across the overpass as this escort drove underneath. And a couple in Utah County pulled over when they saw dozens of emergency vehicles parked for miles along the freeway. Leslie Lundgren told me they stood alongside strangers who took off their hats and silently watched as this procession drove by. One man stood holding an American flag. She said moments before those cars came through carrying the body of this fallen officer, something powerful happened. There was a really, really big dark cloud that kept quickly moving, kind of shifting. We got some video footage of it, but the clouds were just moving pretty quick just to right where the procession was about to start. And it started to kind of, the sky started to clear. And it almost just looked like the sun was shining through right before the procession was coming through. And Lundgren said she had never seen a procession for a fallen officer before. She says ever since that moment, she's been reflecting on the sacrifice members of law enforcement make, as well as their families. And coming up on KSL 5 News tonight, we're going to talk to a woman who knows that sacrifice all too well. We're going to hear her story. The woman who spoke to the family of this fallen Santa Quinn officer will also be down in Santa Quinn talking to community members following this tragic loss from that tight-knit small town in Utah County. I'll send it back to you. And a heartwarming show of support today. Shelby Lofton live for us. Thanks. All right. We'll continue our coverage tonight on the KSL 5 News at 10. You can also get updates sent to your phone through the KSL Plus app.